Birth Control in the United States, Wikipedia Article Audio Birth control in the United States is a complicated issue with a long history. The practice of birth control was common throughout the U.S. prior to 1914, when the movement to legalize contraception began. Long-standing techniques included the rhythm method, withdrawal, diaphragms, contraceptive sponges, condoms, prolonged breastfeeding, and spermicides. Use of contraceptives increased throughout the 19th century, contributing to a 50% drop in the fertility rate in the United States between 1800 and 1900, particularly in urban regions. The only known survey conducted during the 19th century of American women's contraceptive habits was performed by Clelia Mosher from 1892 to 1912. The survey was based on a small sample of upper-class women, and shows that most of the women used contraception and that they viewed sex as a pleasurable act that could be undertaken without the goal of procreation. History Birth control before 20th century Although contraceptives were relatively common in middle-class and upper-class society, the topic was rarely discussed in public. The first book published in the United States which ventured to discuss contraception was Moral Physiology, or, A Brief and Plain Treatise on the Population Question published by Robert Dale Owen in 1831. The book suggested that family planning was a laudable effort, and that sexual gratification without the goal of reproduction was not immoral. Owen recommended withdrawal, but he also discussed sponges and condoms. That book was followed by Fruits of Philosophy, The Private Companion of Young Married People written in 1832 by Charles Knowlton, which recommended douching. Knowlton was prosecuted in Massachusetts on obscenity charges, and served three months in prison. Birth control practices were generally adopted earlier in Europe than in the United States. Knowlton's book was reprinted in 1877 in England by Charles Bradlaff and Annie Besant, with the goal of challenging Britain's obscenity laws. They were arrested but the publicity of their trial contributed to the formation, in 1877, of the Malthusian League the world's first birth control advocacy group which sought to limit population growth to avoid Thomas Malthus' dire predictions of exponential population growth leading to worldwide poverty and famine. By 1930, similar societies had been established in nearly all European countries, and birth control began to find acceptance in most Western European countries except Catholic Ireland, Spain, and France. As the birth control societies spread across Europe, so did birth control clinics. The first birth control clinic in the world was established in the Netherlands in 1882, run by the Netherlands' first female physician, Aletta Jacobs. The first birth control clinic in England was established in 1921 by Marie Stopes, in London. Contraception was not restricted by law in the United States throughout most of the 19th century, but in the 1870s a social purity movement grew in strength, aimed at outlawing vice in general, and prostitution and obscenity in particular. Composed primarily of Protestant moral reformers and middle-class women, the Victorian-era campaign also attacked contraception, which was viewed as an immoral practice that promoted prostitution and venereal disease. Anthony Comstock, a grocery clerk and leader in the purity movement, successfully lobbied for the passage of the 1873 Comstock Act 
a federal law prohibiting mailing of any article or thing designed or intended for the prevention of conception or procuring of abortion as well as any form of contraceptive information. After passage of this first Comstock Act, he was appointed to the position of postal inspector many states also passed similar state laws, sometimes extending the federal law by additionally restricting contraceptives, including information about them and their distribution. Comstock was proud of the fact that he was personally responsible for thousands of arrests and the destruction of hundreds of tons of books and pamphlets. Comstock and his allies also took aim at the libertarians and utopians who comprised the Free Love Movement an initiative to promote sexual freedom, equality for women, and abolition of marriage. The Free Love proponents were the only group to actively oppose the Comstock laws in the 19th century, setting the stage for the birth control movement. The efforts of the Free Love Movement were not successful and, at the beginning of the 20th century, federal and state governments began to enforce the Comstock laws more rigorously. In response, contraception went underground, but it was not extinguished. The number of publications on the topic dwindled, and advertisements, if they were found at all, used euphemisms such as marital aids or hygienic devices. Drug stores continued to sell condoms as rubber goods and cervical caps as womb supporters. Anti-contraception laws After World War II, the birth control movement had accomplished the goal of making birth control legal, and advocacy for reproductive rights began to focus on abortion, public funding, and insurance coverage. Birth control advocacy organizations around the world also began to collaborate. In 1946, Sanger helped found the International Committee on Planned Parenthood, which evolved into the International Planned Parenthood Federation and soon became the world's largest non-governmental international family planning organization. In 1952, John D. Rockefeller III founded the Influential Population Council. Fear of global overpopulation became a major issue in the 1960s, generating concerns about pollution, food shortages, and quality of life, leading to well-funded birth control campaigns around the world. The 1994 International Conference on Population and Development and the 1995 Fourth World Conference on Women addressed birth control and influenced human rights declarations which asserted women's rights to control their own bodies. Birth Control Movement In the early 1950s, Philanthropist Catherine McCormick had provided funding for biologist Gregory Pincus to develop the birth control pill, which was approved by the Food and Drug Administration in 1960. The pill became very popular and had a major impact on society and culture. It contributed to a sharp increase in college attendance and graduation rates for women. New forms of intrauterine devices were introduced in the 1960s, increasing popularity of long-acting reversible contraceptives. In 1965, the Supreme Court ruled in Griswold v. Connecticut that it was unconstitutional for the government to prohibit married couples from using birth control. Also in 1965, 26 states prohibited birth control for unmarried women. In 1967 Boston University students petitioned Bill Baird to challenge Massachusetts's stringent crimes against chastity, decency, morality, and good order law. On April 6, 1967 he gave a speech to 1,500 students and others at Boston University on abortion and birth control. He gave a female student one condom and a package of contraceptive foam. Baird was arrested and convicted as a felon, facing up to 10 years in jail. 
he spent three months in Boston's Charles Street Jail. During his challenge to the Massachusetts law, the Planned Parenthood League of Massachusetts stated that there is nothing to be gained by court action of this kind. The only way to remove the limitations remaining in the law is through the legislative process. Despite this opposition, Baird fought for five years until Eisenstadt v. Baird legalized birth control for all Americans on March 22, 1972. Eisenstadt v. Baird, a landmark right to privacy decision, became the foundation for such cases as Roe v. Wade and the 2003 gay rights victory Lawrence v. Texas. World War II, 1960 In 1970, Congress removed references to contraception from federal anti-obscenity laws, and in 1973, the Roe v. Wade decision legalized abortion during the first trimester of pregnancy. 1960s and after, sexual revolution and the pill. Also in 1970, Title X of the Public Health Service Act was enacted as part of the War on Poverty, to make family planning and preventive health services available to low-income and the uninsured. Without publicly funded family planning services, according to the Guttmacher Institute, the number of unintended pregnancies and abortions in the United States would be nearly two-thirds higher the number of unintended pregnancies among poor women would nearly double. According to the United States Department of Health and Human Services, publicly funded family planning saves nearly $4 in Medicaid expenses for every $1 spent on services. Current Practices In 1982, European drug manufacturers developed Mifepristone, which was initially utilized as a contraceptive, but is now generally prescribed with a prostaglandin to induce abortion in pregnancies up to the fourth month of gestation. To avoid consumer boycotts organized by anti-abortion organizations, the manufacturer donated the U.S. manufacturing rights to Danko Laboratories, a company formed by pro-choice advocates with the sole purpose of distributing Mifepristone in the U.S., and thus immune to the effects of boycotts. In 1997, the FDA approved a prescription emergency contraception pill, which became available over-the-counter in 2006. In 2010, Ulipristal acetate an emergency contraceptive which is more effective after a longer delay was approved for use up to five days after unprotected sexual intercourse. 50-60% to 60 of abortion patients became pregnant in circumstances in which emergency contraceptives could have been used. These emergency contraceptives, including Plan B and ELA-1, became another reproductive rights controversy. Opponents of emergency contraception consider it a form of abortion, because it may interfere with the ability of a fertilized embryo to implant in the uterus, while proponents contend that it is not abortion, because the absence of implantation means that pregnancy never commenced. Cost Savings In 2000 the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission ruled that companies that provided insurance for prescription drugs to their employees but excluded birth control were violating the Civil Rights Act of 1964. President Obama signed the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act on March 23, 2010. As of August 1, 2011, Female contraception was added to a list of preventive services covered by the ACA that would be provided without patient CO payment. The federal mandate applied to all new health insurance plans in all states from August 1, 2012. Grandfathered plans did not have to comply unless they changed substantially. To be grandfathered, 
a group plan must have existed or an individual plan must have been sold before President Obama signed the law, otherwise they were required to comply with the new law. The Guttmacher Institute noted that even before the federal mandate was implemented, 28 states had their own mandates that required health insurance to cover the prescription contraceptives, but the federal mandate innovated by forbidding insurance companies from charging part of the cost to the patient. In 2017, the Trump administration issued a ruling letting insurers and employers refuse to provide birth control if doing so went against their religious beliefs or moral convictions. However, later that same year federal judge Wendy Beadlestone issued an injunction temporarily stopping the enforcement of the Trump administration ruling. There are many types of contraceptive methods available. Hormonal methods which contain the hormones estrogen and progestin include oral contraceptive pills, transdermal patch, and intravaginal ring. Progestin-only methods include an injectable form, a subdermal implant, and the intrauterine device. Non-hormonal contraceptive methods include the copper intrauterine device, male and female condoms, male and female sterilization, cervical diaphragms, and sponges, spermicides, withdrawal, and fertility awareness. In 2006-2008, the most popular contraceptive methods among those at risk of unintended pregnancy were oral contraceptive pills, female sterilization, male condoms, and male sterilization. Intrauterine device, withdrawal. Depo-Provera is used by 2.9%, primarily younger women. Additional Benefits a 2013 Lancet Systematic Literature review found that among reproductive aged women in a marriage or union, 66% worldwide and 77% in the United States use contraception. Despite this unintended pregnancy remains high, just under half of pregnancies in the United States are unintended. 10.6% of women at risk of unintended pregnancy did not use a contraceptive method, including 18.7% of teens and 14.3% of those 20 to 24. Women of reproductive age who are not regarded as at risk for unintended pregnancy include those who are sterile, were sterilized for non-contraceptive reasons, were pregnant or trying to become pregnant, or had not had sex in the three months prior to the survey. When examining reasons why women do not use birth control, S2007 Pregnancy Risk Monitoring Assessment System survey of over 8,000 women with a recent unintended pregnancy found that 33% felt they could not get pregnant at the time of conception, 30% did not mind if they got pregnant, 22% stated their partner did not want to use contraception, 16% cited side effects, 10% felt they or their partner were sterile, 10% reported access problems, and 18% selected other. Government and Policy Contraceptive use saves almost US $19 billion in direct medical costs each year. Access to most effective birth control could save $12 billion a year, study. The cost savings from that drop? About $12 billion in public health care costs each year, according to the new analysis. Contraception has many benefits beyond preventing pregnancy. Combination estrogen progestin contraceptives can successfully treat dysmenorrhea provide symptom relief from endometriosis, reduce heavy menstrual bleeding and improve anemia related to menstrual blood loss, reduce symptoms of premenstrual syndrome and premenstrual dysphoric disorder, reduce ovarian and colon cancer risk, reduce moderate acne, prevent of menstrual migraines, and reduce hirsutism.
The progestin containing intrauterine device can reduce heavy menstrual bleeding and protect against precancerous changes or cancer in the uterus. Condoms are the only contraceptive method which protects against acquisition of sexually transmitted infections. According to the New York Times this October 6, 2017 the Trump administration on Friday moved to expand the rights of employers to deny women insurance coverage for contraception and issued sweeping guidance on religious freedom that critics said could also erode civil rights protections for lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people. Domestic International Legislation 2010 Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act According to the Department of Health and Human Services two rules rolling back a federal requirement that employers must include birth control coverage in their health insurance plans. The rules offer an exemption to any employer that objects to covering contraception services on the basis of sincerely held religious beliefs or moral convictions. In two major legal cases that were planned in 2014, the attorneys made an issue of whether a for-profit corporation can be required to provide coverage for contraceptive services to its employees. As of January 1, 2016, women in Oregon will be eligible to purchase a one-year supply of oral contraceptive. This is the first such legislation in the United States and has attracted the attention of California, Washington State, and New York. In 2017, the Department of Health and Human Services changed the previous federal requirement for employers to cover birth control in the health insurance plans for their employees. Under this new legislation, hundreds of thousands of women will lose their ability to have their birth control costs covered for them. In 2014, the Supreme Court decided that for-profit corporations may offer insurance plans that do not cover contraception, by the rationale that the owners may hold that certain contraceptives violate their religious beliefs. This was a setback for the federal government's attempt to create a uniform set of health care insurance benefits. 2017 New Legislation Under Trump Administration Notable Organizations Influence of Religion Footnotes Sources